Welcome to another video. This is video number three of our series to create a WordPress site or e-commerce site on our local machines and basically be able to practice automation. I teach automation, QA automation or software testing automation and my students practice testing a real e-commerce site and I ask my students to create their own site on their local machine. Even though I have a public site available for them, they don't have access to the back end for the public site so they create their own and they can do whatever they want to do with it and usually when you're a qa person or a tester you want to test the front end as well as the back end and to practice on the on the public sites that's okay but you only have access to the front end nobody's going to give you access to the back end including me because that's not safe so we have been creating a site this site here what you see that's why we created on our local machine i'm on a mac but you can do the same thing on windows it's exact same process and we use a tool called map to install it so we installed map we installed wordpress and then we configured it to look exactly like this and we were working off of this checklist now the last thing is to just test it this is not for everybody but if you are my student you're doing this to test to practice then you have to make sure the api is working even though you're working on the front end even if you're working on the front end you still want to be able to use the back end you want to leverage the back end right a good example is for example if you, you have a test of checkout with an existing user so you don't want to create, go to the front end create a user then go through the checkout process you can just create a user through the back end and then just use that user and check out on the front end uh you want a coupon for your test right you can just create a coupon using the back end using an api then you can use that coupon in the front end so you can use the back end as a helper for your front end even though you're just testing the front end if you just do a selenium test the back end or the APIs are still really useful. So it's good to have access to that. And we're going to test it out. The, the site we just installed right now, we want to make sure the API is working and we have there is few configurations we have to do to get that to work. And we're going to use Postman. I know if you are a QA, you, are, you have Postman already. If you're new and if you're learning, you have to get Postman, okay? You can install the app or you can use it on the web. Create an account because all, you, all your information will be stored, all your APIs, your credentials and everything. And it's a very popular, very powerful tool. Uh, if, you, if you're using another tool to make API calls, feel free. And if you're using Python to make API calls, you can do that too. But this is a quick way of testing your site and uh, your API. Okay. Now, back to our backend. Let's go to the backend of our site. You can go to dashboard, right? This is uh, my site too, is what we've been creating. So the first thing we want to do is, first of all, let's look at the documentation. That helps, right? Instead of just me doing it, and if you miss something, so you can look at the documentation, just Google WooCommerce API. And usually the first hit here, it has a lot of information about the API. They're very short tutorial. It's not much. They can do much better, in my opinion. Um, but there is, there is useful information here. And all the way at the bottom, there are some uh, libraries, the Python libraries. And in my course, we use the Python library. We don't actually make like directly kernel calls to the to the API because we don't have to. We don't have to worry about like creating signatures and stuff. It's a lot harder. But but they they they've already created a Python library for us. There's Node.js library, Python, PHP, and Ruby library. And then we just have to make Python function calls. And instead of trying to construct the whole API call, we just use the function call and make that API. Normally, if you have a library like that, you want to use that, right? Because it's designed specifically for that. So that's beyond the point of this this video, but I just want to bring it up to your attention. And there is really good documentation on the APIs. And the URL we're going to test with, we can test with this or we can test with products. Actually, we do products because we don't have any orders on our site yet. Anyways, now let's get started. First thing is we want to set with the permalink for our site and we want to use this post name okay there's something that's really easy instead of using dates like this which by default probably is we want to set this now let's go to you go to settings the site settings not a woocommerce settings site settings and you click on permalinks click on permalinks and the first thing you see here is there and we want to use post name okay let's change it to post name this is basically what the urls you want the url to look like and we want to use post name and save that once you do that save that the rest of it you can leave as is then we want to create credentials so we're gonna go to woocommerce settings advanced rest api we go to rest api and you can you can play around you can see what so the, the documentation says to 
uh, go ahead and enable legacy but i don't know if we need to do that so we'll come back and try check it out if we need to do that but you can do that if you look at the documentation here it, it says it, it talks about enabling it um it's up to you Let, let's i want to see what happens without it i actually did not try it without with with this checked in so let's click on uh, rest api add keys Keys are like a username and a password. Okay, that's when you access APIs. You usually you 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 need a key and a secret. So this is just a description. I'm just going to say testing new site. What the user is in our case, we only have one user. That's the admin user, and we want this credentials for read and write. We don't want we could sometimes you just want to read, uh, but sometimes you want like if you want to create a coupon like an example I gave you earlier, you want to write right. You're creating something. You want to make a post call. So read and write generate api key and save those you're not going to be able to access those once you leave this page so we have the key and we have the secret okay and we're going to save those once we leave this page you will not be able to see them but you know you can always come back let me click on this come back here if, if you for if you forget them go to rest api this is this one you just have to revoke it and create a new one you can create as many as you want so if you forget it if you don't save it like i just did uh no problem okay now uh, let's get our site url so our site is basically this guy here right localhost 8888 and the site name whatever yours is and we're going to go to postman and we're going to make a get call and it's http because we're doing it locally it's not https it's http and at the end of our site if we look at the documentation you always use wpjson wc v3 slash okay um, and basically this is you guys can do literally this and I'm going to do products products there is there is an API called products if you go to this product documentation uh, API documentation you see all the APIs like all the product uh, user uh, reports all kinds of documents all kinds of APIs and this is what we use in our in, in my uh, in my courses this is what we test we, we write tons of automation for this entire e-commerce API in the in my backend automation course in the front-end automation course we use the backend just as helpers but in the backend automation course we just test the heck out of this whole API okay and it's a really really good way to practice this is because this is a production ready API it's not some uh, basic API I created from with flask which I can do but why not use a production ready application and if you find a bug you can report it to WooCommerce I'm sure they would appreciate it Okay, just, just as a side note. Right, so this page will tell you about authentication and everything, explore it. If you are doing this and you are trying to learn automation and you're trying to learn API automation and if you want to use this API, explore this page. There is a lot of really good information here. Okay, so you can get the URLs, like for example, if the one I want to look at is products and on products, I thought it would show me the URL here, but it's basically slash product. Look at the Python examples and uh let's see it shows you the call but this is when you're using the python api but it's basically what i have here and you just add on top of that but anyway so we just use this your site name wpjson wc v3 and just do products to test it out this is supposed to list out the products it's a get we should get an error when we do when we do send so you cannot last uh, you cannot list resources in 401 right this is a status code here. 401 unauthorized that means we need credentials. So we go to authorization tab and from the type, use auth1, 1, 1.0, auth1.0. There's all kinds of authorizations, use 1.0. This is the easiest one. And I have, some, it, it pre-filled something from my previous one. So leave the signature method the same one, SHA1, and use the key we just created. We created a key and we created a secret that I just stored. On, on my notes, right? Use that, click send, ta-da, we got a response. We got a 200 and we got a list of products. If you see this, there is several products in here. If you keep exp uh, minimizing those, there's a lot of products. There's a JSON, so you get a JSON product back, there's no, there's no body. If you wanna post, if you wanna create a product, you can do the same thing. Then you can save this. I mean, I don't wanna get into how to use Postman, but you can save this API and create another one and you can change this into a post API and in the body, you can give it a JSON and you can actually create products. So if you go look at the documentation, uh, we looked at refund with products, right? You can go to create product 
and you look at example of what the payload should look like for example let me just quickly try that i'm just going to copy this and bring it here we, even though we already verified our our api works so this 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 one says um it doesn't have the color because we don't have headers i guess uh application json we have to have a, a content type content type application json i won't let us change it but let me just make the call it works anyways so we got a 201 201 means it's created i just wanted to see colors here if you added a header it will, it will, it will highlight this you see how you have colors here the payload will be colorful too if you have the right header but we just created a new product so we know the api works okay that is good that's what we wanted to do primarily verified api works so what do we do just to summarize we enter our back in first of all woocommerce settings advanced REST API, and we created a key value pair. Then we went to settings and we went to permalinks and changed this to the post name. The type is post name, okay? And it works. That's what we did. Now, I want, to, I want you to pay really special attention here. This is another uh, area where people get stuck. Let's, let's go to general and change, change our site to well, let's just leave it like this. Actually, I'll just do it in the reverse. So here we have localhost, right? When you go to our site, so let's let's go to our live site. We don't have to use localhost, right? We can use the IP address of localhost, one twenty seven zero zero one, right? Hit enter. Same result. No problem. You with me? We use localhost or the IP. No problem. But when we make an API, an API call and we want to use the IP address, we hit send, we get another uh, connection refused. Let me see what happened here. Ah, we have a slash. I'm getting, a, I'm expecting unauthorized. See, invalid signature. Earlier it was unauthorized, also this unauthorized, but the error message is different. If you get invalid signature, which a lot of students do get this, that means the settings of your site and the URL you're calling are different. So here I'm using the AP, the IP address, the local the local IP address, which in the browser it works. If you just want to access the the website, you can use that, or you can use localhost. But the site setting under setting is localhost. So since this is localhost, when you make the API call, it has to match. The way authentication works, that has to match. Okay. So if you have to use this, if you want to use this. Then you just come here and change change your site your site URL to use it. If you change this, just might as well change both and you save this. Now it logs you out automatically. Anyways, you have to log back in. But now the API should work. The API should work. So it has to match. Okay, keep that in mind. Uh, let me log back in. Admin, admin. Another thing I want to make. Oh, password. Admin and password typing and speaking at the same time another thing is i wanted to test out the front end right and the front end i just want to tell you what to do we don't have to do it but you just go to marketing and coupons and create a hundred percent off coupon create a create your first coupon or you can just click on new on top give it a name like on my main site i call it ssqa 100 because 100 off description 100 uh, percent of the whole cart then the discount type put percentage and then coupon amount put 100 and then don't do anything else click on publish and this coupon is going to work 100 off so if i go to the site let's say i add this to cart i add this to cart i add this to cart and i go to my card it's 106 i apply coupon as you can see the total is 106 and it's automatically free shipping because of the fee, it's over 50 bucks then i add the coupon apply coupon and now total is zero so i can proceed to check out and actually actually check out then this is how you test it because this is a sample website we cannot process credit cards so this is how we actually validate checkout flow and in our automation that's what we do we use we use a coupon and we go check out and test the entire flow and end-to-end -end test all right so back to our checklist check and check we're done. So now you have a site, fully functional site you can practice, all right? And it's local, so you can run load test. You can do front-end automation, back-end automation, database testing. We haven't looked at the database, but if you go to the database, there should be tons of tables that got created by WooCommerce and by 
but yeah, by, I need to refresh. Uh, by WooCommerce and by WordPress. There's tons of tables that got created and explore those, all right? Thank you for watching. Uh, check out my site, supersqa.com. If you wanna be a good QA, you know, follow me, subscribe. Consider taking my courses. I, I have a bootcamp, a live bootcamp where like this on a Zoom setting that I teach. I teach students and they're loving it. I got my first batch done, uh, going right now and my second batch scheduled is coming up on uh, June 10. Currently I have it at three months intervals. It's a great course and I have video courses. Uh, uh, you know, I'm a senior QA automation guy, a senior software engineer in test. And uh, I love, I love to teach this stuff, man. This stuff is great. It's a beautiful career. It's a nice, it's really fun, really good money. Um, it's an awesome career. And talk to me, man. Book book some time with me. There's a, I offer free 30 minutes consultation. You can talk to me and see if QA is for you or, or just ask specific questions or how to learn anything you want. Just talk to me. Uh, I'm available. I'm here to help. All right. Thank you so much. And uh, I'll see you soon.